movement that I'm going to fix for Sue. So let's get this thing open. And this is supposed to be a railway clock cuckoo movement. Railway cuckoo clock movement, I should say. And we'll see here. I'll get the box open. Okay. Box aside. Open things up here. See what we got. Plates. Okay. Okay, there's the perch for the perch for the cuckoo. This is center wheel. Well, part of the center wheel. This is the uh, minute hand and this is the hour tube. So that's for time. This is the count wheel. That goes on the outside of the movement. And there will be a little gear that sits that runs this that goes down near the bottom somewhere. And okay, this is the uh, tension washer. Uh, probably intermediate gear. This is the little gear that runs the count wheel. Yeah. Trundles are going to have to be replaced on these. They're, they're uh, they get some good wear on them. Anyway, that's going to have to be going to have to do some trundle work. This is the wheel that uh, that lifts the lever out of the count wheel and uh, also opens the bird opens the or pushes the bird out the bird perch so if this is worn on this this uh, circumference then we got to build that up and this is what's called a warning wheel a little pen and oh yeah trundles are bad in that too and here is the wheel with a click on it the main wheel and it also is the lift pins that uh, lifts the cuckoo bellows to make the bird cuckoo yeah, but that's uh, that's the strip pallet uh, it definitely has some has some wear in it uh, I don't know what you can see and what you can't see See that? Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a little groove right there, and then on the other pallet, there's the little lift lever. Now this is what rides on this cam right here. Okay, and so here's the. Here's the stop position right there. And then this rides here. And you got brass running on brass, and those tend to wear. And, uh, well, there's no, really no wear on the tip of that. This is a stop pin here. This is where the, the warning pin hits when the, it stops. And when this is lifted off, the warning pin will move from here to here, just that short distance, and that's what stops it for our, uh, here's the main wheel, right there is where the tooth is missing, <laughs> you know, as horrible as that is, it would probably still work, but we're going to, we're going to replace that tooth, this looks Although like the second that's... wheel, yeah, this is second wheel. Ooh, boy, this got a bad casting in. 
Yeah, nothing you can do about that. It's worked for years and years, but oh, is that a weak spot? Uh, here's a, I don't know if you can see it. See that bad casting there? See, that's what's called a porous casting. Probably some sand or something in there that did that. Uh, that's that's right here, right here, and that's pretty deep. And uh, you can see it. It uh, and this should have been rejected in manufacture. There's a spot here that's that's real, real weak. You can see see the spot. There's not much brass here. Not much brass. Uh, that makes me a little nervous uh, that they could let loose at some time in the future. You got a thin spot there along with with a porous casting and uh, what I might do is uh, clean this up a little bit, cut a piece of brass, fit it in here and silver solder it just to reinforce that because that's I mean that's not very much brass between this spot and this tooth here this it looks to me like it would be very easy for this tooth to get knocked right out of there with a, a little bit of stress so we'll take a look at it and maybe reinforce that a little bit this definitely has some uh, the trundles I think they're gonna have to be replaced there's some iffy, definitely uh, some iffy trundles in there. Look like they've been bent. So we'll work on that. That's the second wheel. And finally, we have the escape wheel. And ooh, yeah, definitely got worn trundles lace here. You see those? You see how worn that trundle is? Look at that one. See? See the grooves in them. Okay, so those are going to have to be replaced. Strike side is this side, run side is this side. And we can do this. And then, uh, so this is strike. This will go over. I got to remember, I think it goes this way. This one we go this way. Okay. And in most cuckoos, in most clocks you're gonna find the warning pin is gonna be at the top, but this one's gotta be very close to the bottom because it's a short throw with that lever. And this lever will go in uh, as I recall, it sits on a pin right here, like so. And basically, there's your stop position, right about there. And hello, Dennis Shannon and his wife are in Sycamore, and they want to come over and pick up his clock. Oh, sure. Okay, and I'll take Lily and get out of here so that I can get out of the driveway. That'll be fine. Otherwise, I can't get out. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Oh, just ask him to park over on the right-hand side of the driveway or in the front of the house. Or is he on his way already? Second wheel is going to go in here, and then we have the escape wheel goes here, and those the rest of that can go in later. Well, that doesn't even have this. Goes on the top this way.
Alright. Okay. Now that is most of the pieces put back in. Well, this one's made so you can turn it backwards. That's cool. That's cool. That goes on there. That goes on there. This other one. Uh, this is the uh, intermediate wheel. And then this is the hour pipe. So there's your movement on the front and on the back. This gets put on, uh, gets put on here with a screw right through here and then there's where this lever drops into the slots and that little gear goes on here that runs the uh, runs the count wheel and let's see that's fine and that's fine and that's fine you look at the uh, pivots now, here's what we want to check. Okay, we want to see see that second wheel pivot? That's this one right here. Hard to do this looking in the here. This is second wheel pivot right here. When I move the main wheel, see that flopping back and forth? That's how badly that's worn. The escape gear. Yep, it's got to be redone. Yeah, the nice part about these, there's not a lot of gears, and there's only three gears in the time train. Yeah, the second wheel is. Also bad on the back. It's kind of deep down there. You can't see it as well, but it's uh, it's flopping around. And the uh, escape wheel definitely. The escape wheel jumping. Yeah. On the strike side, main wheel's flopping around. Second wheel's flopping around. Third wheel's flopping around. And I would imagine the yeah, the fly is yeah. So all four of these bushings need replaced, or need to be re or holes need to be rebushed. And uh, oh my goodness, yes. Uh, second wheel on this one with the cam on it. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see that flopping. It's flopping around. Third wheel. Definitely, it's got, uh, it's flopping around, and the fan, definitely. Yeah, so basic, almost all the bushings are going to need to be done on this. Now remember, cuckoos tend to be a little looser, but not as, not as loose as those should be. So your, the tension washer goes under here, so the, the power for the, the power for the motion works is going to come from here, from the main wheel. There's the movement together, and then the strike side movement, looking, okay, and that little spring goes on back of that, uh, on the back of that uh, lever, and that's what gives the, the bird its go. See, it's in lock right there. If I hit that, then it should, then it should strike. Yep, yeah. yeah. it's gonna operate. Okay, we took this pin out. We take this off. This part looks just fine. This is the one with the broken tooth in it. If I want to fix this, this has been riveted. 
this is riveted on this side. I've got to cut through that rivet. Probably the best place to do it is on this side because it's thinner rivet. I'd have to take that out, repair the tooth, and then cut a new tube to go through and rivet that tight again. Got this, we can get take this piece off right here. We're gonna cut that away so we can pull this out and get this off. Fix that tooth. Get it apart. Okay, let's see if we can get this out now. Actually, a hexagonal piece all the way through, so I can drive it out now. Okay, that's a part. Okay. All right, there we go. Here, there's the broken tooth. I was just riveted over. That's what it looks like. And here are the pieces of the wheel. The chain wheel. The outside of one. That's the outside. And then we had a piece like this that went on it. Then the toothed wheel. Next, then we had another one of these, and then we had this, and then we had this, all held together with that. Now we're ready to work on the tooth wheel. Here's what we got. I'm going to do that in here. And what we have now. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to uh, cut a piece to fit in there. Desk that we can now shape to exactly fit, fill that hole. It's a little disc, put a little dab of layout die on it. That's the stuff. And uh, clip it on with a hemostat. And now I can take a pin and scratch the where I need to cut out.
Okay, that's been pretty well cleaned. And uh, now I've got to use a little bit of, I'm going to put a drop of flux on here. Okay. We're going to put some flux in that joint. And we're going to put some flux in that joint. And we'll go through. Okay, then I'm going to take this, which is a uh, high silver content solder. Solder. Right there. And I'm going to take another little piece, put it right here. there hard to see okay I get my torch keep this underneath keep this along here Let that cool. So all we have to do is get in here and grind away this excess. And uh, we'll check and see what we got to do. Here's our ratchet wheel now with a replaced tooth and I cut that inside as best I can. I could have put it in the lathe but I don't want to take the chance on screwing it up in there. This is the back side doesn't get seen because it's but there's the uh, there's the new tooth. There it is. Before we do any bushing we have to polish pivots. That means that every one of the wheels has to be put in here now. these things.
now that we have all of the pivots polished uh, we're ready to start doing some bushing after we complete the bushing then we're going to be doing uh, <coughs> trundles in uh, in lantern pinions these have all been cleaned polished ready to go okay we'll get the strike side back in here check the check the pivots and uh, essentially they're all flopping okay and this side the wear is down in the bottom of this hole so we've got to grind away sometimes we'll use a diamond drill the original side of the hole which is up we have to file that a little bit in the direction of the original so that the reamer will find the original center if not it's gonna ream it off center okay that's good now we have to determine what bushing we need the size of this particular pivot is one point about 1.8 millimeters 1.8 So these are 1.5 millimeter bore. They have a three and a half millimeter OD, so we need to use a, <coughs> a reamer that will ream out three and a half. Well, actually, a little less than that. So we'll get that reamer. All right, this reamer is uh, 3.47 so we're gonna put that in our drawing to drill or remount this hole for this hole just a tiny bit take the burr off and a slight tiny chamfer on it is going to allow the bushing to win much easier sticking out there. I think I'll just do that on the edge of the table down here and put a block on the edge of the drawer. Tap that in. Okay, now the bushing is in there. Right here. And now what we have to do is we have to fit it. This so we have to now broach that out to 1.8. The hole is now 1.5, so we got to broach that out to 1.8. So 
so then we'll put the cutting brooch in here. this bushing from both sides. Good, now we need a smoothing brooch. going to go now that we have both sides bushed. Okay, do that. The wheel spins very nicely. shake. Yes, indeed. No more flopping around there. Okay. That wheel now has a nice new bushing in it. And uh, as soon as we get that hexagonal brass in the mail, I ordered the stuff. It's supposed to be here on the 19th. Came on the 12th yesterday. And uh, they sent me round. So I called them up. They said they would ship out the hex right away. So we can get that wheel put back together. So that one looks good. Like it. started. Set this down here. Get the bushing. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> Cutting brooch. Take her smoothing brooch. There we go. And we see a wheel now. That spins very nicely. Okay. That fell into place. Yeah, those still mesh quite nicely. Doesn't run that freely. But you can sure see sure see the one that hasn't been bushed when it's laying this way, it kind of shakes all over the place. So uh Okay, that goes into that new bushing. Yeah, this will go on. Check this by itself right now. Huh. Tweezers. Feel if we've got in shake. Good, well, that's an end shake. And let's take this one, wipe it out. Well, you know what I didn't do? I forgot to do something that you need to do. I forgot to chamfer these. Because we've got to replace uh, 
I've still got to replace uh, trundles in the lantern pinions that are worn badly. So let's check this now. And okay, we've got the whole strike side now done. And there's the No real bad flopping around anymore. It's just got the play that is supposed to be there in a cuckoo clock. And a little bit looser than what you put in a another clock. Boy, everything just runs smooth as silk now. And it'll even run better once we get those trundles done. We've got the one on the fly, these need to be replaced. The one with the warning wheel need to be replaced. Oh, mercy sakes, yes, the second wheel definitely needs to be replaced. So we got three, three uh, gears there that need to be done. Then we still got to look at the the three gears that go on the time side, and that. Uh, We'll get those, I think all, we need six bushings total over there. Okay, I've measured these uh, <coughs> last four bushings, and they're all exactly the same size. So what I'm going to do is just drill out all four of them. Causing that to be a little rough. You can see here, these lantern pinions are actually already coming out. They're so loose. Huh. I wonder if there wasn't a problem before this. That one's not loose. That one is. That one's not loose. That one's not really loose. <coughs> okay. So we got going on here. See here, they're actually they're actually coming out. Well, if one of those had fallen out before, these are solid. There, and that one's coming out. I don't have to drill those. Oh, 
only one of them that's actually in there as tight as it's supposed to be. And it even came out. Okay. All right, now, see we've got all of the trundles out of that. And uh, now all I gotta do is I gotta measure the size of those get out the wire thickness that's that size cut them put no trundles in and then uh, close the tops of these so they can't get out all right so let's see what we got here I think you can see how badly worn they were. So we're going to replace those. New trundles. I'm gonna take carbide scriber. So we have now replaced the pinions, or the trundles, in that pinion with a nice hard wire, the same size. Those were 0.7 millimeters. So that one's done. Uh, basically a whole bunch more to do. different. Okay, I got one out. I see if how this looks with these glasses maybe. Yeah. See how those trundles are worn? That's why we're going to replace those. Anyway, cut the top brass of the it's called a shroud these are shrouds and these are called trundles and sometimes you gotta these are bent over the top of the holes hold the pins in and you gotta remove the brass to get the pins out these are popping out pretty good One more. Okay. Okay. Now, lengthwise, I figure out what we got here. So what am I? 
Okay. So here's what we're dealing with. I just made a mark on a piece of paper. I'm going to use the same wire. And what I do is I put the wire here. Wait, I gotta take a stone. Clean up the edge. Take this end nipper. These aren't so thick that I gotta cut them with the big wire cutters. I'm gonna look through the magnifier. I want to cut these just a tiny bit shorter than the other ones. Okay, put them in the middle of the nippers. Put a piece of cloth around it so I want to cut it. And the piece doesn't fly off somewhere. And there it is. Let's see how that works. Hello? Hello. What do you want to, want to go get Lily? Or are you don't get Oh, it's, it's, it's 10.30. Okay, is it time for us to go? No, not, I mean, if we leave here at quarter after 11, we get to the bagel place at 12, right? Yeah. Pick her up at once. Okay, sounds good to me. It's 10.30 now. All right. You want me to call you? Yeah, call me when you're ready to go and then we'll take off. God can remove the rest of the snow. <laughs> I'm going to clear these holes just a little bit. I'm going to take Music wire. I was able to get it in the sizes that I needed. The only problem was that uh, you have to buy 25 feet. So it's uh, more than enough to last a lifetime.
Okay, we're getting there. Three more to do. Keeps them from flying off into La La Land. Okay. The land is ground. The other one's still sharp. And put the last one in here. Nice and shiny, very hard, and uh, not going anywhere. Keep the camera in a position you can see. I just take this thing. form the hole ever so slightly just to put a burr over it. Is it done? Now we have a couple of Okay more. now that I've replaced the worn trundles in the lantern pinions I put the in this uh, time side, time train, uh, I put the wheels back in position and when I turn them there's a point at which see they turn real nice so it gets to a certain point and then we run into something that's jamming Spot things here up now See, everything runs very nicely and smoothly in between that spot and that spot. In rotation, it runs just fine. But when I get to that point, there it jams. I bet you can't guess where that is. Now take this off, and that's right here where that porous casting is that we looked at before and uh, so it means that there's there's something going on there so I'm going to have to examine this very closely to find out why it's jamming at that point and I'd be willing to bet it's probably one of these teeth that is slightly slightly bent and out of alignment if it's bent that means then the new the new trundles can't fit between the teeth so we'll I'll be taking a look at that for a bit found a problem there's our porous casting let me turn this wheel on edge and see if you see what I see as I rotate this see if I can do this rotate it toward the camera see it sure about the I'm gonna have to deal with that where that is in relation to the porous casting right there so I would bet that something's going on there and uh, we're gonna have to reinforce maybe fill that and then reinforce that spot over there. This is definitely a weakness in that way. Alright, I straightened that tooth back up. And now, and now if I run this, it runs very smoothly. 
if I now run this and you watch the top of that wheel that second wheel which is the one at the bottom see it moving past the right watch as it moves past this is the direction it would be moving There's a little bit of wobble in that wheel, so there's a bent spot in it. Now we're snagged again, and we got to do some close examination on this one. Seems to be a spot right there that's a little rough. Our next step is going to be getting the chain wheel back together with the one that we fixed the <coughs> the tooth on the on the ratchet and here's the piece that holds everything together it's a uh, hexagonal brass and it's taken me a while to find a piece that's the same size 930 seconds and uh, I had to order <laughs> this and that's a three foot piece but it's going to work so fine we'll cut a piece slightly bigger and <clears throat> this end is much smaller and round so we got to cut whatever we cut we're going to put in the lathe and we're going to round it off so that we can put it just through this peen this over and uh, that'll go there then this will go next then this goes next then we put this piece on then we put this piece on and this is just about the same size as drives on and then this gets uh, And this holds the uh, ratchet. The ratchet is the last thing that goes on. It's got a hexagonal hole in it. And uh, we'll cut the piece long enough that it extends through that. And uh, gets peened on. And then we'll all be back together. So we got some measuring to do. And uh, that shape is going to be rounded piece with that followed by the hex piece like so so its uh, general shape is going to be like this okay and then on the end we look at the end and we're looking at a hex with a circle like that so we need this dimension and we need this dimension and whatever. I cut off a piece of the brass. I have much more here than what I need but it gives me room enough to also chuck up. First thing we need to do is just face this off. Mm hmm. 
Testing, see if that end fit the piece. It does fine. So we'll turn this around. Put things. Uh, Okay, here's our new piece. Here's the old piece. And the old piece is on here. And it kind of wobbles a little bit. But the new piece, a little tighter. Yeah, it's going to go on here. No wobble at all. Okay, so now we just got to put this back together. So first thing is this wheel, and it has a small hole. A small one is meant to go in this round. And I machined that to be tight. Put that down here. Let me get our little hammer. And I'd rather use a block of wood on that. I don't really feel like being the daylights out of that. We've got that over the slot and the stake. Okay. Now that's on there firmly. There's a tiny little bit sticking out that we can then stake or use a punch on to peen that over the vise. Then what I will do, let me get some light on here where I can see a little bit. I keep that out of the way. So That's that flat part. Then one of these goes on next. This is establishes the side of the, uh, the chain. And here we have our cog. That goes on next. And this one goes on. Almost put it on upside down. This goes on this way. Then this piece goes on with a larger hole. And that presses on. 
and there's our chain wheel and the excess sticking out here is now for this little fella and now I understand why this isn't, isn't just done solid because uh, they put this little depression in it to take up for the uh, for this being peened over There's our new ratchet wheel. Okay, we're going to put this together <coughs> at least now to uh, test run it. Here's our restored click and then we'll put in our yes, I can't see so good put in our second wheel and then we'll put in the should check this out Put in the escape wheel. Just make sure we have a machine that's going to run. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I have that piece of chain. Damn it, I'll put a little oil on this. We'll set it up and we'll see if it's going to run. Okay, I've got it running. Problem is, when that second wheel with that porous casting. It's up to the top where it meshes with the pinion gear of the uh, escape wheel. A tooth or two that uh, deforms because that uh, it's undermined by that porous casting and it stops the clock. So I'm going to have to before I do anything more. I'm going to have to very carefully file that out and then I'm going to have to uh, put a reinforcing piece of brass Here's in Here's that porous casting. It actually goes up inside. That tooth is not hanging on there by very much. So we're going to file that out. Replace Every it. Every time this goes round I can straighten out a tooth. Problem is it bends again. You can see there's one there that's slightly out of kilter. Okay, we're getting down. A little more filing to do. We're down to the rotten stuff, but get that out of there. I'd have shown the filing work if it wouldn't have uh, camera wouldn't have gotten away in the work but it's filed out now I have to make two pieces to fit Don't in have there any sheet material thick enough to uh, make those pieces for the inserts so I'm going to use some round stock and I'm going to uh, cut off a piece of the thickness that I need this 
it. soldering in a couple of pieces of brass in here no more porosity just, just a little bit extra brass there so that uh, would have a little extra support that uh, was pretty nasty okay so we got her done okay right there's the point that it would have stopped before okay we got it running Okay, got the wheels back in. No levers yet, but just the stop lever. <clears throat> Here you can see the governor gear. This is the warning gear with a warning pin on it. And if we run this now you see right here is the warning pin and it's in the stop position that's this little lever that sticks out here when this goes into warning this pin is going to move from here to here. It's just a very short distance. Okay, so put pressure on the wheel, hit this, and then this goes into strike. This will go into actually this little lever pin here will go inside there. And we'll deal with that shortly. But this gets lifted. When this gets lifted, that lifts another little lever that goes up to stop the warning pin, which is right now not in the right position. At the same time, it lifts the brass pin out of the way and that goes into its run All right now with the minute wheel on shaft it pushes on a lever which lifts here see it lift so it continues to lift this will move a pin in front of the path of the warning pin on the back. So let me show that. See that lever moving up inside there? It's doing two things, lifting a lever in the way of the warning pin and also lifting that brass piece out of the way. It's in warning right now. Trips off the front and that runs and 
shuts back off. Alright. Now we should see this thing operate and count hours. So the first, let's see what we got here. We got there's 12, 11. Okay, it should it should strike 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now it should just strike the half hour. Good. It should strike eleven. One, two, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. All right. Oh, we got it all working. Now we got to get, we have to get on the piece that controls the cuckoo. Okay when you get your clock back this arm or this lever right here this vertical one is attached to the arbor that has that brass piece that rides on the cam so when that cam is lifted or that brass lever is lifted that lifts this out too and rides on top of the cam that's going to push this is going to go in and when that goes in it pushes on this lever and that in turn pushes the bird out as you can see at the very top of the screen so I'm pushing That open that makes the bird go out. So you have to make some adjustments depending on where this has to be in your case, where you attach the bird. And you're gonna have to make some adjustments in the bend in these levers. I'm gonna assume that the bird is going to be about level. Thinking this goes on the back of the case. The bird's sitting here. Then he's got to, this has probably got to be about parallel with the plates. So that has to go in just a little bit to hold that bird in that position. So I'm going to bend this in and eventually, well, it's still got to go a little more. It's very difficult to, to make these adjustments, but let's see if we can do this by bending it down just a little bit. Okay, it's getting closer to parallel. Let's see where we're at, if that's okay. That's lock position. That's pretty far back. But yeah, just have to kind of mess with it until when I hit this and it goes into strike. That's pushing the bird out. That might do it right there. So there's gong, coo, coo, gong, coo, coo. Gong coo coo, gong coo coo, dong doo coo, dong coo coo, and there it's shut. And you can see what this lever is. Okay, here goes the minute hand on. All right, that's got the pins on it that will set the strike. 
And here's where you're going to have to find a delicate balance in here with these levers. Because once you're setting this up at home, let's see where we're showing, okay. Okay, as this goes to start setting and it's lifting, watch where the bird is. It moves a little bit. You may have to adjust that out just a tiny bit so that, or bend this in just a tiny bit so that the bird doesn't push the door open for its time. Got to be a little bit of play in that wire in the door as well. There we go. Alright. It's all back together. Alright, before we do anything else, we got to go ahead and oil this end so it'll be all set. Okay, had to take us all apart again because after it got together I found some wear that I didn't know was there. I should have been looking. <clears throat> this piece right here inside. This is the one that we didn't take apart. This is the one that had the intact click. But the, uh, it's worn on the inside. I'm going to have to take that apart. Well, how in the heck I missed that, I'll never know. But this got to all be taken apart and replace that, uh, that piece of hex brass and I have to make the same piece I did for the other one on the lathe. Okay, now that I have the pin out of it, what's worn is this bore. If you can see that very clearly if I put this on it, look at how much that wobbles. So I'm going to have to uh, dismantle this one like I did the other one, cut this piece off, drive that out, and uh, cut a new uh, hex piece to put in there with a, a redone bore. 